Hey there, it's Kenny. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating and often misunderstood topic of fangens during the Tang Dynasty. When we hear the term fangens, we often think of a fragmented China with a weak central government, unable to effectively govern and protect its people. But is this really the case? Today, we're going to dive into the reality of fangens during the Tang Dynasty. So, if you're ready to challenge your assumptions and learn more about the complexity of fangens during the Tang Dynasty, then sit back, relax, and let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about how the Tang Dynasty's fangens, known as barrier towns, came to be. To start, the Tang Dynasty inherited the practice of setting up regional military commands, known as dufas, from previous dynasties. During the reign of Emperor Ruzhong, a new post called Jack Dushi was created to oversee these commands. Under Emperor Zunzhong, the power of the Jack Dushi was expanded, and ten new military governors were appointed to oversee the borders. These governors were collectively known as fangen, which later became the name for the entire system of fangens. After the Tang Dynasty successfully united much of China and defeated numerous rebel forces, they continued to expand their territory by conquering neighboring countries such as the Turks, the Taiyuan, and the Beech and Gaguryeo kingdoms. They also defeated the Tibetan Empire and various other tribes such as the Kittens and the Si. The Tang Dynasty's military achievements were impressive, but they also faced many challenges. During the reign of Emperor Gozhong, the Tibetan Empire began to rise in power leading to frequent conflicts with the Tang Dynasty. This was also a time when the system of recruiting soldiers changed from the old Fu Bing system, where soldiers were recruited from local garrisons, to a new system of recruiting soldiers directly from the population. This change inadvertently led to the rise of powerful military governors who controlled their own armies, providing the conditions for the development of the Fanjins. Emperor Zunzhong continued to expand the military garrisons and Fanjins, allowing the military governors to have more control over the administration and finances of their territories. This was necessary for the Tang Dynasty to effectively conduct wars in distant regions. The military governors had jurisdiction over several provinces and were responsible for their own troops, creating a decentralized system of military control. This system allowed the Tang Dynasty to effectively respond to military threats, but it also contributed to the eventual fragmentation of the empire. During the late reign of Emperor Zunzhong, the power of the military governors, known as Jack Dushi had grown too great. Some governors even controlled multiple territories, leading to a power struggle that ultimately resulted in the An Lok Shan Rebellion. The rebellion was a civil war that lasted from 755 to 763 and was led by Tang generals An Lok Shan and Qi Si Ming. The war caused a significant loss of life and a decline in the strength of the Tang Dynasty. To quell the rebellion, the Tang Dynasty was forced to appoint many more military governors who controlled their own territories, known as Fan Jin. The central government hoped to use these Fan Jins to restore order and put an end to the rebellion. However, the Fan Jins became the root cause of chaos and ultimately led to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. The problem of Fan Jins persisted even after the rebellion was crushed. The military governors controlled their territories in terms of military, financial, and personnel matters without much interference from the central government. This situation eventually led to the fragmentation of the empire and the rise of the five dynasties and ten kingdoms period. The issue of Fanjin had a significant impact on the Tang dynasty as well as the subsequent five dynasties and ten kingdoms period and the northern Song dynasty. The fragmentation of power among the military governors, or Jack Dushi, was the root cause of the problem. They controlled their own territories and armies, creating a situation where the central government had little control over the affairs of the empire. Now, let's talk about how Fan Jins led to the fragmentation of the empire. During the reign of Emperor Dazhong, a rebellion broke out in the Fan Jin of Hobei, which led to the capture of Chang'an, the capital of the Tang Dynasty. Emperor Dazhong had to flee to Hanzhong and spend four years suppressing the rebellion, known as the Jingyuan Rebellion. Although this was an early example of Fan Jin's causing rebellion, the problem persisted and spread throughout the empire. In particular, the three Fan Jins of Hobei, which included Qingde, Waibot, and Laolong, were notorious for their independence from the central government. They pretended to be loyal to the emperor, but had their 
own systems of law and bureaucracy. According to the old book of Tang, during the reign of Emperor Cizong, these Fanjins appointed their own officials, did not pay taxes to the central government, and the military governors were not appointed by the emperor. In other words, they were like independent states. After the Huang Chao Rebellion, the Tang Dynasty was in decline, and according to the Jiji Tongjin, the position of the royal family was declining, and the Fanjins did not follow the central government's orders. The Waibot Fanjin, for example, was notorious for its hereditary succession and the frequent use of violence to seize power. Many of its leaders killed their superiors to take their place. If they were dissatisfied with someone, they would kill their entire family. When people hear about the Fanjins of the Tang Dynasty, they often associate them with fragmentation and chaos. The Anlok Shan Rebellion is often cited as the starting point for the Fanjins and the decline of the Tang Dynasty. However, this is not entirely accurate, and it overlooks the complex history of the Tang Dynasty's political and economic changes. The truth is that the Fanjins were not a constant source of chaos and fragmentation. After the suppression of the Anlok Shan Rebellion in 763, the situation was relatively stable for over 110 years, and the number of Fanjins remained around 50. It wasn't until the Wang Chao Rebellion that the situation changed. The rebellion led to the fragmentation of the empire and the rise of warlords, which eventually led to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. However, it is essential to note that this was not solely due to the Fanjins, but rather a combination of factors, including economic instability, corruption, and the weakening of the central government. Thus, it is inaccurate to use the term Fanjin to describe the entire period of political and economic change that occurred in the Tang Dynasty's later years. Doing so oversimplifies the complex history of the time and obscures the significant cultural achievements that occurred during this period. During the Tang Dynasty's later years, many significant cultural and artistic developments took place, such as the flourishing of poetry, art, and literature. These achievements were the result of significant economic and social changes. When most people think of Fanjins in the Tang Dynasty, they often imagine them as a symbol of chaos and disunity. However, this is not entirely accurate. While some Fanjins were indeed involved in rebellion and fragmentation, others supported the Tang government and helped maintain its rule. In fact, Fanjins in the Tang Dynasty can be divided into four types based on their functions and geographical characteristics. First, there are the Hobei-based Fanjins, which were mainly located in the northern Hobei region. These Fanjins were often composed of former rebels who surrendered to the Tang Dynasty after the Anlok Shan Rebellion. They were not appointed by the central government and did not pay taxes to the government. Instead, they were supported by their own soldiers and often became a source of conflict between the Fanjins and the central government. Second, there were the Central Plain Fanjins, which were not involved in rebellion and were mainly located in the Central Plains region. These Fanjins were often established during times of war and were heavily fortified with tens of thousands of troops stationed there. They were self-sufficient in terms of taxes and were a crucial force in suppressing rebellions during the late Tang Dynasty. Third, there were the Border Defense Fanjins, which were also not involved in rebellion and were mainly located in the vast northwest and southwest border regions. These Fanjins were heavily fortified, and the soldiers stationed there were paid by the central government. Their primary function was to defend the borders against external threats. Finally, there were the Southeast Wealth Fanjins, which were also not involved in rebellion and were mainly located in the Southeast region. These Fanjins were relatively weak in terms of military strength, but were rich in resources and wealth. They were an important source of tax revenue for the Tang government and were considered a stable region during the turbulent late Tang dynasty. Many people believe that the Fanjins in the Hobei region were entirely independent of the central government, but that's not entirely true. While it's true that most of the Fanjins were not appointed by the central government and refused to pay taxes to the government, the Tang dynasty's policies and laws were still somehow implemented in the region. Changes to the administrative divisions of the region, as well as the addition and removal of officials were sometimes still subject to the approval of the Tang court. In fact, officials from the Hobei region could also be transferred by the central government. Fanjins in the Tang dynasty were not necessarily a symbol of chaos and disunity. While some Fanjins were involved in rebellion and fragmentation, others were supportive of the central government and helped maintain its rule. Most Fanjins in the Tang dynasty were under the control of the central government and were not characterized by rebellion and fragmentation. The appointment and transfer of their military 
military governors were decided by the central government, any disturbances were typically internal and not due to rebellious factions. However, the different types of fanjins had varying impacts on the politics, finances, and military affairs of the empire. The southeastern fanjins were supportive of the Tang government and provided financial support to the court. The border defense fanjins were crucial in defending the empire's borders, while the central plain fanjins were instrumental in suppressing rebellions. During the reign of Emperor Dai Zhong, the relationship between the various fanjins had already been established. However, this pattern was disrupted by the Huang Chao Rebellion. The Central Plain Fanjins, which were crucial to the Tang Dynasty's control, were mostly absorbed by ambitious warlords like Zhu Wen. The Southeastern Fanjins no longer provided financial support to the Tang Court, and the Eastern and Border Defense Fanjins were embroiled in conflicts with each other. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed learning about the factionalism and complexity of Tang Dynasty fanjins. If you did, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support means the world to me and motivates me to keep creating content. If you want to see more of my commentary on Chinese history, culture, and artifacts, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas and would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.